For starters, the letters HPV stand for human papillomavirus. The word papilloma means a benign tumor of the skin or mucous membrane. Hence, HPV is a sexually transmitted infection that resides in the skin and spreads by way of skin contact. I think there's a hundred different strains of HPV. You can actually get HPV even like skin rashes that you may never have known were the cause of, of that. Even, um, yeah, I mean, there's a there's hundred different kinds. They don't really know what they do for, for a lot of them, what the outcome is. Many people believe this virus causes genital warts, which is only partially correct. In reality, of the 100 different strains of HPV, they fall into two categories. Those that cause genital warts are the low-risk types. The high-risk type causes skin lesions on the cervix, which, if unchecked, can give women cervical cancer. Needless to say, these are the hardest to identify, and the only way for now to detect cervical cancer is through pap smears. The pap smear is a test that uh, scrapes some cer uh, cells off the top of the cervix and tests for uh, precancerous cells. And so when we get back a, an abnormal pap smear, which is a pap smear that has abnormal, p potentially precancerous cells on it, we test those cells for the HPV virus. And I would say 99% um, of those come back with HPV. One huge misconception about the virus, perhaps as a result of the AIDS epidemic, is that HPV is an immediate death sentence, as HIV is still considered to be. It is not. HPV will not kill you, no. Um, we can, with our, we've developed really great ways of preventing cervical cancer through the follow-up that we do, um, which involves biopsying the areas that have this, the HPV-related cellular changes, um, and then if they're extensive, we can just take those cells right off the top of the cervix. And so if women are very diligent about follow-up care with their OBGYN, we can pretty much prevent cervical cancer that way, although um, we can't say for sure that we will prevent cervical cancer. Despite how common we now know the virus is, many people still associate HPV with promiscuity and other unfair assertions. It is a subject that Marcus Schwartz, who leads a support group of people living with HPV at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, deals with all the time. We couldn't meet with a support group because cameras were not allowed into the room, but Mr. Schwartz agreed to meet with us at his home. All STIs have a stigma attached to it, and the issue being that uh, whether you're a guy or whether you're a girl. If you're a girl and you have an STI, you're a tramp. If you're a guy and you have an STI, uh, clearly this isn't discussed. I think the whole like cancer versus nasty warts kind of mentality is, you know, if you're, everybody's sympathetic towards cancer. Not everybody's really sympathetic towards a wart or, you know, a funny smelling discharge or something like that of another STD. Nobody has said anything to my face about feeling less about me or anything, no. I mean, I've gotten a really like good feedback, especially if people around the office actually started like talking about it. Not, not even really to me, but I heard through other people that discussions were being started about, you know, oh, well, I had and blah, 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 you know, and actually a couple people did come up to me even in the office and tell me, you know, like their experiences and like what they don't know what they should be doing now and, so uh, I haven't really gotten any negative, like, oh, you're such a hussy feedback. <laughs> However, there are still difficulties with HPV. If you were going to a testing center, you'd be tested for HIV, herpes, gonorrhea, and other STIs, but not HPV. Well, girl, you tested negative for all sexually transmitted diseases and infections? Yes. <laughs> So a verdict like this from a testing facility might not be telling you everything. If you go into a hundred different STI or STD clinics across the country and you say, look, I just hit megabucks, I got nothing to do, I have thousands and thousands of dollars, and I love being pro you know, probed and prodded, would you please test me in every way you can? Almost all of them will test you for HIV, Chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis. Most will not test for HSV. In fact, almost none will. The vast majority will not test for HPV. We don't routinely test for it. The only way we, we can test for it is through the pap smear. There is a blood test for HPV that um, is sort of controversial at, at this point um, because HPV, if it's not causing, it can just be around in your body. And if it's not causing any 
manifestations in your cervix or as genital warts, there's, there's really no way to treat it because it is a virus. It's because of the virus's difficulty to detect that HPV arguably remains the most mysterious of all the STIs out there. Many sexually active individuals do not know they have it, and many do not develop symptoms or health problems. If HPV is in so many people, can it be prevented? Is there any way of resisting the virus?